If you like the Back for Blood beta, surprise, you're gonna enjoy the final product, which was released today. I have played it on the Xbox Series S as well as PC, and it is a zombie took a slap in good time. However, some things have changed from the beta that I kind of wish didn't. Let's get this thing. All right, Stallions and Stallionettes, welcome to the Gamer Heaven. I'm your host, AK40 Kevin. Jumping off this game review, what exactly is Back for Blood? It's a multiplayer first person shooter zombie survival game developed by Turtle Rock Studios and published by Warner Brothers Interactive. It came out today, that is October 12th, and it is on the following platforms Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PS5, and Microsoft Windows. Something important to note to save you Stallions a couple of shekels in your coin purse this game is on Game Pass Ultimate, Ultimate meaning the version that is on PC and console. So that is how I was able to play this on Xbox Series S as well as my Windows 10 PC without having to actually run out and spend $60 on a new release game. So if you do have Game Pass Ultimate, which if you don't, I do have a link in the description below to a discounted price down there. I would strongly recommend picking up the game that way. So starting out with performance, this game is incredibly well optimized and does run incredibly fluid on my PC. I was able to hold a very consistent 160 frames per second as my monitor is a native 165 hertz. And that is with all graphical settings on high and ultra and it didn't break a sweat, not even in the slightest so this game is very very well optimized on the pc i ran into literally zero hiccups or stuttering which is awesome the game also looked incredibly fluid and smooth on the xbox series s running at a lock 60 frames per second however the resolution does drop down to a pretty weird 1296 so it's not holding 1440 but it is above 1080p again that is a 1296p which is the same resolution it was running at during the open beta but this game runs incredibly smooth on literally all platforms it's on holding a 4k 60 on the xbox series X and PlayStation 5, which I kind of want to play it on the PS5 now. Graphically, this game does look incredibly impressive on both the console and the PC. It does look like the saturation and the contrast have both been bumped up quite a bit. The contrast makes a big difference on HDR TVs and monitors. And because a lot of the environments you're in are either at night or in thick fog or light from the sun bleeding through the trees and whatnot, you're in a lot of urban areas. There's also some wide open cornfields and whatnot. And yeah, your corn's getting shucked out in those fields. You're going to see a lot of long draw distances with nice vistas and whatnot, saturation and contrast. Both of those knobs have been turned to the right pretty aggressively. The contrast is very noticeable, giving you kind of an HDR effect, even if you don't have an HDR monitor or TV. And the saturation is going to make all of the colors quite poppy. They're not going to be quite as bright and vibrant as something like Fortnite, as the graphic style is a little bit more faux realism here. But you are gonna notice some very, very rich colors, almost to the point of being unnatural looking, but it is quite fitting to the environments and it does look good. Also, I will say that the lighting effects look phenomenal. The way that your light from the flashlight cascades on your environment look really good and add to that kind of eerie feel. Next up, the audio design is quite good. The sounds that the zombies and the enemies make are pretty terrifying. And also you kind of get that eerie, ominous feeling as you're trekking through urban areas. It sounds good. Really not a whole lot to say there. The soundtrack absolutely shreds and is a perfect blend of electronic, rock, rap, pretty much everything. And it kicks in at just the right moment to kind of pump up you and your boys when you're mag dumping into a satchel of pus. So I got my phone out here, not some texting on the job or anything, but I have some notes here that I typed in while I was playing so I don't forget anything. And we're gonna cover combat, which is pretty damn satisfying. The shooting in this game, all the guns have a very unique and distinct feel. Now, of course, there is a color-coded tier or rarity system that you're probably acquainted with if you played any RPG or looter shooter, such as Borderlands or Destiny. And all the weapons, even in the same classes, feel distinct and different in their own means because of the way they sound, their shooting and reloading animations, they just feel quite unique. Also, the weapon modding system does work incredibly good and mods do feel useful. Attachments actually do something Something or change the way your weapon functions. A, a big old donkey McDonk butt. But this is a J-Lo. This is a big old donk. This is a big butt here. Attachments cannot be removed and then put in your inventory and they cannot be swapped to a new weapon even if it's the same class. So, so you have like an optic and a silencer or suppressor on an AR and you pick up another one that's virtually the same caliber, the same class, same rarity, and the, the, your, your attachments are just gone. If they could just change that with a patch or update, that'd be great because losing your attachments that helpful and useful, like I said, every time you swap weapons, it's kind of stupid. Moreover than that, if you accidentally pick up something that you don't want, for example, a scope or optic that is a zoom that you suck with, and then you just can't take it off, you basically have to ditch that weapon and find something else. 
Other than weapons, there's a pretty good variety of enemy types that do feel unique in their own means. Obviously, you have regular zombies and you have these tall boys that basically try and grab you. They have a very small crit zone hitbox or, you know, a sensitive area, a weakness zone that they are pretty good at covering up. So you have to use communication with your teammates to flank and shoot them. But what adds a good amount of variety to the combat system is the card system, which is basically a deck of cards that you build up. They're collectible cards that you can unlock. And I will touch a little bit later in the video about solo play, where basically you have all these cards already pre-unlocked, which is pretty stupid, but it does give you an opportunity to try these cards out before you spend your copper on them and buy them in the actual co-op mode. But cards allow you to do different character builds. So you can have a healer, or you can have a tank, or you can have a, you know, a mid-range DPS build. And when you get on the higher difficulties, so veteran and above, you're going to definitely want a group of people that are communicating in Discord or any kind of voice chat application and are proficient at first person shooters and all have kind of a specific role or build. Obviously, everyone's shooting everything that moves, obviously, but you should literally have somebody healing and somebody tanking because things get pretty hectic and that ties in directly with the difficulty. And this is, in my opinion, probably one of the biggest changes from the beta. Definite for sure difficulty reworkings to where now recruit seems pretty fucking easy and then veteran seems pretty hard i'm not gonna lie if you and your squad are a bunch of esports athletes maybe you're a, a couple of full-time streamers or something and you're really good at shooters uh, unlike me and my boys you're probably gonna do okay but veteran is more of like a hard mode and then hardcore is more of like get your titties slapped back. Which brings me into the next point, and that would be playing solo. You can jump into solo queues and matches are constantly being filled to make sure that you have a full team, which is awesome. So even if somebody leaves or gets kicked, somebody else is going to come in there and fill uh, basically exactly where you are in your mission, which is great because you're always going to have a full squad. But if you want to play truly solo solo, they do have a specific mode that is called solo campaign. But there's some major caveats to that mode. First of all, you have all of the cards unlocked from the get go, which kind of defeats the purpose of actually playing through the game because the cards are the most meaningful when it comes to character building and you just get all those given to you. So it kind of takes away the purpose of like what to grind towards. But it does give you an opportunity, like I alluded to earlier, to test out what each of these cards do. And some of them do some very unique stuff. Like, for example, there's one detrimental nerf is quite harmful. Like, for example, you can't aim down sights or something, but you get a buff on top of that like increased melee damage, for example. And in my opinion, one of the most detrimental parts of the solo mode is the fact that it's not truly an offline solo campaign mode. You are always connected to the internet with this game. I'm sure that the developers have some reasoning for this, but piss poor for a couple of reasons. One, what happens if your internet goes down? I'm in Florida and we get thunderstorms all the time and occasionally I lose, you know, power or internet or both. You know, what if your internet goes down or it's kind of choppy or something like that and you're getting kicked off the server? If you're just trying to play solo campaign by yourself to get through the story, that's going to kick you off. Not to mention from a game preservation standpoint, whenever the servers do run cold, which eventually will ha happen, obviously the developers aren't going to continue support for this for decades, then this game is virtually unplayable, even in its solo mode. So that's kind of weird. But whenever you do play solo, you will be filled with some bots, some uh, AI, some robots, and the AI is actually pretty good. I never played with bots during the beta, so I can't speak to if they changed it, but in the actual finished product are pretty good. And especially after playing Far Cry 6 here a lot recently, I would say in comparison to something like that, the AI is borderline good. You can't direct them to do anything, which is frustrating because if you're playing with actual friends on Discord, you can basically try and collaborate to take out harder enemies as where the bots just shoot anything that moves. They will heal you too, if you need healing. Also, another little gripe that I had with the actual combat, which is the majority of the game is just mowing down enemies, would be the spawn points. Not only do some of the enemies spawn in completely silently, like I think the tall boys and a couple of the other ones make like virtually no audible sound when they spawn in. That'd be one thing if they spawn kind of far away from you, but they don't. Sometimes they spawn virtually right up on top of you. I never actually watched an enemy spawn in, like just watched them pop in or anything like that, but they do spawn just like around corners and stuff like that really close to you to where even if you mowed down a hall of bodies and it was cleared out a second ago and you turn and then turn back, there might be enemies spawning in, which is kind of frustrating, especially when they don't make an audible cue that they're spawning in. So I think they need to do a little bit of adjustment post-launch with some patches and updates 
to rework the difficulty as well as the spawn points, either add an audible queue or get them spawning a little bit further or in places that are a little bit more, I can't use the word realistic here, but you know, more um, not right up your tuchus. So as for actual content and replayability or end game content, what to do after you've beat the main game, content is okay. You've got 33 missions, which will take you roughly seven to 10 hours. We'll just say eight, because that's the average. About eight hours to complete on recruit difficulty, which I think most people will probably start on recruit. Veteran, like I said, is a big jump up from recruit to the point to where it doesn't feel like a medium mode. It feels like a hard mode and then hard mode feels like good luck, brother. So I, I, I wish that they either rebalanced it to make veteran a little bit easier and recruit a little bit harder, or they even added a fourth mode in between recruit and vet. I think that would be beneficial, but you do have 33 missions and I will say they are pretty repetitive. A lot of the environments and stuff, which people that played the beta were thinking that you would get a lot more diversity in your environments, maybe some snowy environments or maybe some more outdoor wide open areas, tight corridors, which you do get these environments, but you, you, you see a lot of the same in act two and three that you do in the first act to the point to where you're wondering like, do they add anything outside of the beta? Like the beta was kind of, I guess the, the proper terminology for it is front loaded, meaning that they showcased basically what you're gonna get in the final product. So that's good. The core gameplay that you got in the beta has transferred over to the full game, but the environments, you're not gonna see a whole heck of a lot more than you did in the beta. So thus far, we've been talking completely about PVE or player versus environment in a co-op situation with your buds or with randoms. We haven't really touched on competitive play or PVP. There is PVP. It's not great. And I'll explain why the modes are kind of confusing because they don't really break down what the objective is. They're just like, well, this is the human side. This is the infected or zombie side, but you don't really understand the gameplay mechanics. It's not really very well explained in a tutorial or anything like that, but that's fine. You can look it up online or YouTube videos, whatever skill based matchmaking they have going on. Players are either absolute sweaty esports athletes or it's somebody enjoying their first time picking up a controller and they're in the corner picking pubes not even looking where enemies would be spawning so you either get easy kills or you're getting thrashed also the modes don't really feel meaningful which is kind of crappy because if they took some of the excitement and the core gameplay from the pve modes and then put that into a pvep so player versus environment i.e zombies with players trying to attack you too, there could be some really fun, engaging PVP moments, but there isn't. So what is my final verdict? Well, this isn't the kind of game I can be like, well, it's worth a pickup or it's it's worth passing on because it's on Game Pass. So if you already had that subscription service, you can try it right now for, well, not free, but for your subscription costs. And if you don't have Game Pass, like I said, usually they run promotions where you can try it for free and you could basically try the game. If you didn't like it, unsubscribe from Game Pass, whatever. But all in all, the core gameplay, what the game is all about, is very, very fun. You're going to get about eight to 10 hours with you and three of your buddies running around, having a good time, shooting zombies, which is satisfying. The weapons sound and feel great. The environments look good. Granted, a little repetitive because acts two and three are basically like a facelifted one. The card system is probably one of the most unique ways to do a character build that I've ever seen before because it's a deck and they can all kind of stack on each other and basically create some really interesting builds. I will say if you're only picking this up for PVP, you probably won't have a good time. I will say if you're playing by yourself, you probably won't have a good time. Uh, but if you are playing with a group of buddies, you're going to have a good time slaying zombies. If you enjoyed this honest game review, liking it will help it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach and assist them as well. Help them make a decision if Back for Blood is worth playing or not. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing and honest gaming peripheral reviews. And I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily. Peace.